Some tarry. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I'd like to place on record my tribute today alongside so many that have spoken today already and offer my personal condolences to His Majesty King Charles III on behalf of all of our communities in Ilford South. Mr Deputy Speaker, like many parliamentarians across the House, I have always had a profound respect for the Queen and for the role she has performed within our nation. I have admired the sage advice and wise counsel she gave to so many leaders over the course of the past seven decades. And as a son of an Anglican rector and canon of St uh, Chelmsford Cathedral, someone who has grown up in the church, someone who has grown up in the churches of Ilford, I have understood so much as part of my life the role that the Queen has performed as head of the Church of England. And in a constituency like Ilford, where people really do do God alongside their politics, with so many people of so many faiths attending religious institutions on a daily basis, she has been held so fondly in the hearts of so many, with her religious beliefs and her faith, but also, of course, because of her public service. The Queen's longevity is perhaps encapsulated best in the fact that the first Prime Minister she saw in Winston Churchill was born in 1874, while well, the current incumbent of number 10, that she greeted just days ago, was born in 1975, a span of more than 100 years, an entire century, which is truly astounding. But she was also an inspiration to our nation, a steadying influence for millions to look up to amid the turbulence and flux so often in British politics. She was the anchor that so many needed during times of crisis. I remember very clearly witnessing the strength that she had in the wake of the seven seven bombings that hit London and the streets of our capital. She was able to show her tenderness in meeting the victims of the terrorist atrocities, while at the same time stating defiantly, and I quote, that those who perpetrate these brutal acts against innocent people should know that they would not change our way of life, and they did not. She was also an inspiration for our war generation, my great-grandparents and grandparents who served fighting the Nazis. A shining light on the role that the woman performed tirelessly in those war years. Reading the story about how he aged just 18 in 1944, she begged her father, King George, to let her join the war effort. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the King resolutely refused to let her do so. However, undeterred, she continued to plead with her father until he finally relented and let her to join the Auxiliary Territorial Service. She was soon donning a pair of coveralls, driving a military truck and working as a mechanic. In doing so, Queen Elizabeth became the first woman in the royal family to join the armed forces and the first serving monarch to do so in over a thousand years. And in the immediate aftermath of the Second World War, in fact the day after VE Day, in 9th of May 1945, Elizabeth took part in a tour of some of the bombed areas of Ilford in recognition of the terrible conditions that East London and that part of Essex had endured under the relentless bombing raids of the Luftwaffe. On her walkabout, where she joined by King George, the Queen Mother and Princess Margaret, she was sewn Lay Street, not far from my constituency office in Ilford, next to, at that time, the bombed-out local cinema. Throughout her time as the monarch, Elizabeth was always supportive of the people of Ilford. I recall one of her last trips to Ilford when she visited Valentine's Mansion in Valentine's Park, to mark her Diamond Jubilee in 2012. Crowds thronged to that part, and it was abundantly clear the love and respect that people from every generation and across every community had for the Queen. And as head of the Commonwealth, the Queen was held in particularly high regard by my constituents in Ilford, many of which were represented by her with their origins and heritage in the 54 countries that our Commonwealth now extends to. And, Deputy Speaker, I will quickly relay one very quick uh, memento of my meeting with the Queen as I was a young scout in the 2nd Seven Kings troop from Milford, where I saw first hand the work that Elizabeth did as the patron of the scout movement. And I recall very fondly actually climbing to the top of a tree in Gilwell Park so I could actually walk her, see her walk past. And my scout master asked me to come down and to speak to her directly. Because even at such a young age, the work she did with the movement of scouts was its patron, was an inspiration. So, in closing, I would like to send my heartfelt condolences. Her death casts a long shadow over our nation and all within the Commonwealth, but the lessons that she taught us will live on for many years to come. God rest the Queen, God bless all at home mourn her, and long live the King.